Wild Health is about optimizing you. We use genomics, blood work, biometrics, microbiome assessment, many other tests, and a conversation with you to come up with a full health optimization plan. What's the perfect diet, exercise, and supplement plan for you and only you? The Wild Health Podcast is about optimizing all of us. Here we cover the cutting-edge science that gives you the base to be able to apply the personalized plan we give you as a patient. To sign up as a patient, go to wildhealth.com. Or if you're a physician or health coach and you want to learn how to do this for your patients, we're happy to help as well. Wildhealth.com for all the information on becoming a patient or working with us. All right. So uh, grateful to have Kelly back with us today. Kelly, how you doing? I'm good. It's been a good day. Awesome. Um, so <clears throat> this is sort of a question that came up um, from uh, a couple of patients, and um, it's not an uncommon question at all, but I'm going to role play it a little bit with you, and then I'll, I'll get into the question, or, or maybe I'll, I'll role play the, the question, and then I'll, I'll kind of expand on it. So I'm doing my best right now. Like my goal is to uh, really clean up my diet. Um, I, you know, I've been eating, uh, committed to eating like whole foods, um, you know, plenty of uh, vegetables. And every time I go home, there's pizza and chicken tenders on the stove. Um, and I just find myself caving and eating half a pizza and I feel like it's moving me um, like right off of my health path, even though I'm kind of committed to staying there. Okay, pause. None of that's true. Sometimes there is pizza uh, at home. Um, I, I generally uh, eat it when I feel like it and, and mostly stay away from it. Um, but um, so common for people to be on their health journey, whether it's a training goal, a sleep goal, and they have a sleep partner, uh, a nutrition goal, mindfulness, whatever it is, and they're having a hard time staying on that path because people around them are not bought in to mm -hmm. that patient's path. So, um, you know, you can, you can approach it as if the, 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 uh, hypothetical, uh, fictional story I just told you is true, or just would love your thoughts on how do you approach coaching somebody in this kind of situation? Cause this is really where the rubber meets the road for a lot of folks is, you know, I know what, I know what my goals are because I've worked with my coach. I've clarified them. I, I know what my uh, my plan should look like to get to those goals because I've met with my coach and my doc. But man, just the execution, it feels so hard. Um, so, so share your share your wisdom, Kelly. Let me know. What do I need to do? Yeah. Well, so I guess with, with the food, I mean, for all of my clients, I want to come to them with number one, self-compassion. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that this is life and it's not, we're not going for perfection. And I, I really think that's important to, to point out. Um, one of the main, I guess, thought processes that people adopt is all or nothing. And so if I can't go out and do an hour workout and I can't do, you know, I'm not going to run and then lift weights for 30 minutes that I'm not going to do anything. And so from a big picture perspective, we're, my thought process as a coach is what, what are their goals? Are we going for weight loss? Are we going for um, body composition? You know, those type of things. But also from a longevity standpoint is where I try to move clients from a big picture perspective is that we're going for a health goal long term. This is not just something that is, I'm going to do this for 21 days, form a habit, and then go back to my regular life, right? So in that type of big picture, long game that we're playing, we've got to look at this all or nothing thinking. And so from a food perspective, oftentimes I do, you know, sort of evaluate their thought process there of... So if I eat the pizza, then what's my next choice? Am I going to eat the donut the next morning or am I going to make the next best choice? Is pizza okay every now and then? What's the next best choice? So that's one thought process that I would go on is that we're actually going for this long game. 
Mm -hmm. Um, So any comments on that? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think I've shared this one uh, particular tip uh, that we learned from a, a friend of the uh, the Wild Health family, who's a um, who uh, uh, is a nutritionist uh, originally. Which is, you know, everybody can relate to going to bed and uh, at some point in their life forgetting to brush your teeth. But right. you don't wake up the next day and forget to brush your teeth and then say, "Well, forget it. I'm not going to brush my teeth anymore because I didn't brush it two nights ago." Right. So there is this, um, you know, the the uh, the the effort button that can be pressed when somebody kind of goes off what they had planned in their mind about how they what they were going to eat or how they were going to train or the sleep they were going to get or the the one drink they were going to have at a social event that turned into two or three and everyone has that ability to make a choice at that point to you know, press that button and then go straight to the, you know, the, I don't know, the fifth or sixth drink or the, or the pint of ice cream or the no exercise for the next week. And, you know, just be in this punishing self cycle or to say, yeah, okay, that happened. And again, I mean, this gets back as always in our conversations, this gets back to mindfulness where, yeah, I ate some pizza. That's, that's what happened. Right. Like it doesn't need to be a bad thing. It, I don't need, you know, I can accept that that's what happened. I can be non-judgmental about it and I can decide what to do in this moment. Um, but that's really hard for people. It's easy to, easy to say. And often this is an area where I find that, that patients really uh, need a lot of support. And I think that's okay if that's where you are, if you're listening and you're in that place where, you know, that, that piece of pizza, that is the first time you're eating something that's not kind of where you're focused. If that leads you to then, you know, make some nachos and then eat some ice cream and you feel really bad about yourself. And like, that's really common. That's why we're talking about it, right? right. Is that this happens. And I, th- and there's two, two things here. We work on mindset with food and we work on habits with food mm-hmm. and triggers with food. So there's like two different areas we can go in. in mindset, I do good, better, and best food with a lot of people. Because what are the good food is probably the food that's not great for you, but it is food that is, has a, a emotional connection support for you. Like for me, my grandmother used to take me and get the ice cream cones dipped in chocolate. I think we called them brown cows, you know, mm. at the time. and I, to this day have a very fond memory of that food. That is a good food for me. I don't want to, to label that food as a bad food. Right. Mm-hmm. So for some mac and cheese that grandma made or whatever that would be better food is the food that's like, hey, it's probably not. It's maybe has some gluten in it <laughs> that maybe has the dairy that you're not supposed to eat, you know. But how do we up that? It's it's the sandwich that how do we up that nutritional value? We add the greens and we add the um, pick the fermented foods on it and we add some nutritional, but maybe it's not the perfect food. But it's still got some nutritional value. And then the best, of course, is for Matt Dawson, it'd be sardines and walnuts. And, you know, what are those whole foods where you're just strict? And so that's that's a piece of working on, you know, good, better and best, not perfect. Right. Because perfection is not possible. And so and but then then we're going to look at so we're going to work on the mindset there for people that the, the pizza is always there. But and we're going to work on I do use mindfulness because it be, it allows you to become aware of what's happening. So like even if we're stressed, you feel that in your stomach. If you eat this, how do you feel? If mm-hmm. you don't get enough sleep, how do you feel? It's becoming intuitive to actually how your body feels when you eat this or drink that or X, Y, and Z. So that can be a key piece of the puzzle as well of moving t- someone towards a healthier habit long term because they actually associate positive feelings with their body with making good health food choices, right? Yeah, I think that's that's so key and, and may just be like the... Um you know, the pearl of wisdom for, uh, for, for this entire topic in my, in my opinion, at least, um, it, it is, um, the ability to, you know, when, when people talk about say intuitive eating, right. Yep. I, I, I always hear from folks. Yeah. I mean, if I, I'm going to intuit my way into, uh, you know, cupcake, right. Cause that, that's intuitively fun. Um, that's not what we mean when we talk about intuitive eating or intuitive movement or intuitive anything. It's, that you you know kind of table stakes to get into intuitive anything 
is developing that pause and that mindfulness. And mm -hmm. then when you're, you know, your intuitive aspect is how is this going to make me feel? Because I have done this one thing before and it usually makes me feel like this, right? So, you know, I have no craving whatsoever for McDonald's, but when I was a kid, right. I would go to McDonald's and it was a treat. And I almost always had a bellyache afterwards. And, um, and like for me, there's no temptation to go eat at McDonald's because it doesn't provide me with like, uh, you know, a sentimental value. Um, and I know intuitively it's going to make me feel terrible. So right. when you know exactly how something is going to make you feel and that you let that guide your decision making, all of a sudden it just feels like a lot less work and you're not willpowering your way through it. But I you can't just say, oh, go eat intuitively to somebody without giving them the proper training on how to get no. in touch with their intuition and their feelings, or they're just going to intuit their way into doing what they do out of habit. So that's why, I mean, that is what we're working on is mindset and habit. And if you mm -hmm. think about it from a, we're going to move into the behaviors too. We're not just going to work on the mindset. We're going to move into the behaviors. And that includes habits because 50% of what we do is habitual. Right. And we've used the example before of my my kid just learned how to drive a car. Right. 16. First time a car came up next to him. He's like, Mom, what do I do? You know, he was nervous. Mm -hmm. And now I've been driving for 30 years. I don't have to think about it. It's part of my just routine of what I do. So anytime anybody is starting a new goal, there is a level of discomfort with that goal. It is not going to be easy. It is not going to be something that is just, let me just go do this. If I'm going to go in the gym and I want to, you know, put on, you know, five pounds of, of lean muscle mass, there's going to be a process that has to be undergone in order to move in that direction. There's going to have to be habits that are put into place. That's not something I'm going to want to wake up every single day and be like, yes, I get to do that. You know, like they, you know, you can't expect a goal that we don't have a process in place and some discomfort. Same thing with mindfulness. Like people want the, 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 the benefits of mindfulness, and that, but they're willing to do the work in the gym, but we're not willing to do the work in the mindfulness realm or putting the goals into place and following the process, not perfectly, but they're, in order to meet a goal, there's behaviors they're going to have to go from uncomfortable to have it. And that yeah. that's going to take a process and I would help them form those goals in order to move them to that process. I love that. I mean, it's how many times have you heard? I can't meditate. I tried it and it's like, I, I'm really bad at it. And you know, it's the, it's the idea that, uh, of course you're bad at it. Like you've never done it. Right. Why right. did you think you were going to be good at it? Right. right. <laughs> it's, it's the same thing across the board, whether it's meditation, stress reduction, yoga, uh, you know, weight training, uh, endurance events, nutrition. It doesn't really matter. Like you don't have to, our minds are so funny, right? They, they tell us that, um, if it's hard right now, it's always going to be hard, but I love the driving example, right? Because there is nothing more effortless, you know, for anyone who's been driving a car for years, you, have you ever just like shown up at the place where you were going, yep. but you don't really actually remember driving any of the way. Maybe you were on the phone with somebody in the car or you were just enjoying the scenery or whatever else. And you just end up there. It's effortless. And I think that that's really where we're pushing people towards or helping them get is to eating becomes like driving a car and you're, you're, you know, sometimes you've been driving a car for 20 years, but you still hit the curb when you're taking a turn, right? You're not going to be exactly. perfect, right? But it isn't going to feel like hard, hard work every single day. And I think the forgiveness part, the beginner's mind part, the, um, the, you know, greasing this groove of a habit while knowing that it's going to take time to learn it. Um, it just takes so much pressure off. And then, you know, ultimately that's the issue when, you know, you get that, fictional uh story i told you of like hey i show up and i'm always eating the stuff that's sitting around that i know i shouldn't be it's the judgment about eating it that's really the issue that needs to be addressed I, first i tell my patients to give themselves permission like i if you're going to eat it 
eat it on purpose and enjoy it. Let it be in that good category for you in a comfort yeah. zone and then make the next best choice. And so, and I help them put their goals into place. And if you look at from a behavior standpoint in coaching, you know, you're in that contemplative phase, which is weighing the pros and cons of making this decision. Have they even decided, I really want to go for this long-term goal of health. Then you move into action phase and action phase is consistently making choices for at least six months that are moving you towards that goal. And it's not till six months beyond that you get into maintenance phase. And then you can always go back into any of the other phases. Mm -hmm. And so it, we're, our goal is to, there, there's a process and a timeline to get things into habit from a longevity standpoint, from a health, who am I? Am I, I'm a healthy person long-term is where we're moving people towards. I love that. Thank you, Kelly. I mean, this is, uh, you know, it's, it's sort of on, on, on the surface, a simple question. And, you know, I think that when this is a great illustration of the value of coaching and the, the, a coaching mindset and coaching approach is helping someone to realize what that journey is going to look like for them and to have them clarify their own goals along the way and develop right. that plan. Because I think on first blush, lots of folks would think, Hey, if I'm working with a health coach and I tell them this scenario about the chicken tenders and the pizza, they're going to give me two or three techniques that'll stop me from being in that situation or, you know, and that's more consulting. That's not, you know, or advice giving, right. It's not coaching. Um, so I uh, appreciate you letting me run through this with you to give folks a sense of what exactly coaching feels like and how it's so different from somebody just saying, well, you know, come home an hour later and then the food will be old. So you won't want to eat it. Right. That's right. not a sustainable solution. Um, awesome. Thanks again, Kelly. It was great talking to you. Thanks, Mike. It was fun. That's all for this episode. Thanks everyone for listening. And if you're looking for more, be sure to follow us on social at WildHealthMD and head over to wildhealth.com or wildhealth.com backslash premium to become a patient and experience precision medicine for yourself.